Okay, so let's build, let's simulate building a hypothetical sampling distribution. And the key here is we're sampling from a normal population. All right, so we're going to, I'm going to simulate this hypothetical normal population. Capital N denotes our, our population size. The mean of mu standard deviation sigma. Right, then we're going to take a bunch of samples of sample size n and build these hypothetical sampling distributions. So say our population was made of 100,000 bags of pretzels. Normal population, mean of 16, standard deviation of 5. I'm going to start by taking 1,000 samples of size 5, calculating the mean of each of those samples, and then graphing them, so putting them in histogram then that will give us our sampling distribution and we can see what's going on. Now we're going to repeat this process under different conditions. But here's the questions that I want you to keep in mind as we're going through this simulation. Right, whenever we're trying to describe the distribution of a variable, if, I, if we're ever asked to describe a distribution, the first thing that should come to mind is that acronym SOX, Shape, Outlier, Center, Spread. Right, so shape should be the first thing that comes to mind. What is the shape of this sampling distribution? Does it seem to depend on something? Now, outliers, since this is a random simulation with hundreds of thousands of, of items involved, we're not really going to see a lot of outliers. Right? So we're not too worried about outliers right now. But we are worried about center. Center can check the accuracy. We're worried about spread or the precision. Just like does our shapes seem to depend on something, what does this spread depend on? All right, so here's our hypothetical population. Pretty normal, centered at 16, standard deviation of 5. 100,000 bags of pretzels. So again, here on top is our hypothetical population. <coughs> On the bottom, the sampling distribution of a thousand sample means sample size five. So we want to think about first the shape. So what does the shape look like? Well, it's pretty normal. What does the center seem to be? Okay, so we know the center of this population was about 16. I think it's safe to say this center looks to be about 16. So what about the spread? Well, these are both on similar scales. Spread of the population was 5. Sampling distribution here looks to be a little less spread out. Now it's hard to look at it and put a number on it. Right? We'll put a number on it later, but for now we see it looks to be a little less spread out. Alright, so this is when we had a small sample of size 5. So let's so maybe some of you guys are thinking, well, it's a really small sample. Okay, so let's bump our sample size up and see what happens. So here is our sampling distribution for samples of size 5. Here is our sampling distribution for samples of size 15. All right. So what do we see happening here as we're adjusting our sample size? Well, we see shape still looks pretty normal center we've got the actual values highlighted here the center of this one was 16.17 pretty close to 16. center here is 15.99 really close to what we're looking for to 16. spread what's happening well this one was less spread out than the population this sampling distribution looks to be even less spread out okay Let's look at the actual numbers. So I calculated the standard deviations. This standard deviation, much less than this one. So again, here's our population. Sampling distribution for 1,000 samples of size 5. Sampling distribution for 1,000 samples of size 15. Now let's bump our sample size up once more to 30 and see if we see these trends continuing. 
So here's our population, sampling distribution of 5, 15, and 30. So what's happening? Shape-wise, looking about the same across the board. Center, 16, 16, 16, right about 16. So regardless of sample size, things are looking pretty accurate. But a big thing that we see are standard deviation in the case of a sampling distribution, standard error, the spread is going down. All right, so this is an important idea. Looks like as n is going up, our standard error is going down. In other words, bigger sample sizes are giving us more precise results. Right? More precise is good. So formally answering those questions, pretty normal across the board, pretty accurate across the board, and we see that as n is getting bigger, we're getting more precise. Now remember, this was all from a normal population. All right. So here's kind of summing all of that up in a table. So how do we get these values of spread? Well, I calculated these by just taking all of those different sample means and finding their standard deviation. Right, but we wouldn't want to have to do that every single time. Okay, so we have what's called here our estimated standard error. So how do we estimate our standard error? That's calculated. this. We take our population standard deviation and simply divide by the square root of our sample size. Again, it makes sense. This was the relationship that we saw. As n goes up, our standard error goes down. Makes sense. As n gets bigger and bigger, dividing by a bigger and bigger number, and this entire quantity is going to get smaller. So just summing up what we saw when sampling from a normal population, this sampling distribution looked pretty normal across the board. The mean looked to be right around mu, looked to be pretty accurate, and our precision was going down as n went up. That standard error could be approximated by this. All right, but again, the Big point here is that we were sampling from a normal population. So yeah, that makes sense that things would look pretty normal. Right? We know about the normal distribution. We know how to work with it, z-scores, table, all this stuff. Right? So the normal distribution is pretty easy to work with. Right? So we're looking for normality. Right? Sampling from a normal population makes sense that the sampling distribution would be normal. Now we're going to think about what if we sample from a non-normal population? Okay, so there are other non-normal distributions. Here, I decided to use, in this simulation, the exponential distribution. Okay, so first of all, the point here isn't necessarily that it's the exponential distribution. The point here is that it's not a normal distribution. I use the exponential, right, because it looks extremely non-normal, right? This is what our, our exponential distribution looks like. Okay, I used here again an exponential distribution of 16, and one interesting thing about the exponential distribution is mean and standard deviation are the same. Okay, so I repeated our previous process, took very similar steps. The difference here is I'm sampling from a non-normal population rather than a normal. I still simulated 100,000 people or things in my population. And I'm going to take 1,000 samples of size 5, 15, and 30, and we're going to see if we see some of the same results, some of the same patterns. All right, so here's my exponential population that I'm sampling from. So I took 1,000 samples of size 5, graphed their sample means, and here's what I got. So shape. 
I want to keep the same questions in mind. Shape. Well, I don't think it looks exactly normal. I think it looks kind of right skewed, right? We can see some of that original population in the sampling distribution for small sample size. Let's compare the two. Population, sampling distribution for n equal to 5. Kind of right skewed. Center-wise, though, we know this center was 16. This center looks probably about 16. Spread is definitely less spread out. All right, let's bump the sample size up to 15. So 1,000 samples of size 15 graphed their means. This is probably looking a little more normal. Maybe not perfect, but a little more normal. Okay, the mean here, about 16. Standard error getting smaller. All right, bump in up. Now we're looking pretty normal. We're looking pretty normal. Our center's looking to be right around 16, still accurate, like we thought. And our spread is getting smaller. So non-normal, specifically exponential population. Sampling distribution of size 5. We still see some of that right skewness. Sampling distribution size 15, it's starting to shape up a little bit. Sampling distribution of 30, safe to say it's pretty normal. Right, so, did we, so we saw some similar patterns. Right, one of the similar patterns that we see is N is going up. What's happening to my standard error here? Yep, looks like it's still going down. All right. But we really see something about the normality. Right? The answers to all of these questions are basically the same. Here is where we see the difference. Right? Sampling distribution starts to look more normal as our sample size gets big. Once we got to 30, we were in pretty good shape. All right. So let's compare these two. So remember, sampling from a non-normal population. And what we found was we need big sample sizes in order to see the normality. Things were pretty accurate across the board, and it does look like this estimated standard error value, now I've calculated the exact standard errors, the estimated standard error values using sigma over square root of n, these look to be pretty good estimates of each other. Okay? So, comparing these two simulations, normal population Everything looked normal across the board. Everything looked accurate across the board. Sigma over root n is a good estimate. And as n gets bigger, my standard error goes down. When sampling from a non-normal population, we really had to get a big sample size in order to see that normality emerge. Right. That so what this idea of the central limit theorem says. Okay, the central limit theorem says it doesn't matter what kind of distribution we're sampling from, if our sample size is large enough, we can assume normality of the sampling distribution of the sample mean with parameters mu and standard error sigma over root n. And notice the central limit theorem is a little vague, it doesn't give an exact number usually says something like it's sufficiently large or large enough. And we just saw in our simulation, 30 is usually a, a pretty generally accepted number. And so if we're trying to differentiate, is this is a large sample, is this a small sample, 30s, 30 is usually our, our cutoff, our rule of thumb. All right, so thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and we will pick up with some applications of these ideas in the future.